All right. So, uh, as we've been talking about a little bit, um, Rack is back. Indeed. B A Q. Right. <laughs> um, so, how did that uh, end up coming together again? Um, you know, we 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 we're, we all stay in really close touch, and um, Rack's a ton of fun. So, for the last you know, since the Big Up, the last show we played was the Big Up Festival in New York in 2011. And for the whole year, you know, we, we tossed around the ideas of, uh, the idea of throwing some shows together and, uh, and like, you know, getting out there and starting to make some music again. Um, and it, the stars aligned, you know, everybody's, everybody has time to do it and everybody's into it. Um, you know, we do have the addition of a new drummer, Adrian Tramitano from The Breakfast and, you know, Kung Fu, my band, uh, our band Kung Fu, we're in, uh, together. Um, and that's going to be really exciting. And it was all kind of, you know, it was a phone call, you know, a phone call from a friend who said, you want to play our festival? And I called, uh, my other friend, Chris, who plays guitar and was like, Hey, maybe we should play. And, you know, uh, it, it all kind of happened by itself. It's, it's great though. I'm psyched. I'm, I'm s totally psyched. <laughs> Excellent. So is that, is that the Big Up Festival you're talking about that you got the phone call for? Or are you oh, talking no, about a festival more, coming up? Playing, uh, no, the first show uh, back is going to be the Aura of Music and Arts Festival in Live Oak, Florida. And that's um, February 15th. What's the uh, weather going to be like down there? Um, hopefully it's going to be nice and warm. <laughs> we, uh, we just played Bear Creek at the same site in November uh, in Live Oak. And, you know... In the, dur during the day, it was like 70-something degrees, but at night, it was, uh, you know, lower 40s, maybe even <laughs> in the upper 30s. So uh, what uh, what kind of expectations do you guys have for Rack coming up? Anything? Are you just going to try and fall back into the old step? or? Um, the, I, 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 the old step meaning like touring? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see Rack going on a three-month national tour anytime soon like we used to do. You know, we're too... We've gotten older and wiser, and there's more efficient uh, and economical ways, to be honest, to, to do business. Um, that said, we are going to look for opportunities to play. You know, um, our other projects are extremely busy. Kung Fu has really been a busy, uh, has been getting busier and busier as time goes on. Um, we're going to be he touring pretty heavily in 2013. Pretty heavy uh, festival, you know, schedule this summer. So. Uh, you know, with Adrian and I on the road. Now, Chris is also the guitarist for Conspirator, which is uh, Mark Brownstein and and, um, and Aaron Magner from the Disco Biscuits and KJ Salka, and they're extremely busy as well uh, in the EDM scene. So, like I said, the, the stars have to kind of align, you know, for the rack stuff to happen. Right now, well, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to kind of move back to the time when rack started slowing down a little and, uh, you know, for whatever reason, sometimes projects have a hitch in the giddy up sometimes they end and you know i know like if i lose a job my whole world is kind of spinning and uh, I would, what was that like for you when when everything came to an end and and w did you have anything else going on what led you to kung fu and how long did it take you to get that project go up and going gotcha. um you know we were all really really happy to take a break <laughs> we uh you know, we at the uh, the last like year and a half, you know, we had gotten a tour bus and we'd start and do it. We started to do these insane tours where we would leave at like, the, you know, August 20th and come home on Thanksgiving, like crazy, you know, just too much. Um, and, you know, we, we, we hit it hard, you know, we, we for the last few years, though, especially like 05, 06, 07, we were playing, you know, a couple hundred shows a year, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe 170, like just tons and tons of concerts. And, um, you know, there was a point my, uh, I got married and, um, we got pregnant and we, we all talked, the rack guys, we all talked and I was like, you know, I, I can't be on the road. I don't want to be on the road. You know, I want to be home with my, with my son, you know? Uh, so we all decided it was a good time to take a break and not, you know, we never broke up. We never discussed breaking up. We just discussed not touring and beating the shit out of, you know, ourselves the way we were, you know, uh, doing it. So, uh, my wife and I moved to Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, I just kind of stepped out of the music scene for a while. I wrote a ton of music, but I, I was just home kind of playing music on my own. Uh, we lived near the beach. You know, lived in Burlington, Vermont for so many years, you know, dealing with 20 degree below, you know, 20 degree below zero winters. Moving to Charleston was, you know. It was a it was a treat. 
Um, meanwhile, Chris and uh, Chris had his own. Uh, you know, he re he released a solo album, like shredding kind of guitar. You know, solo album, and he he did a, a you know a little bit of touring. <laughs> he did a little bit of touring, and uh, with that, and um, you know, we ended up. Uh, I ended up deciding that I wanted to move back to Connecticut and to kind of get back into music. My son was old enough to do it. Um, you know, really the, the potent part was I wanted to be home with him, uh, you know, for at least the first couple of years. Uh, you know, I just didn't want to miss a thing. And uh, my wife supported that as well. You know, she's, uh, she's been so supportive of, of my music. You know, it's ridiculous. I would never be able to do the stuff I'm doing, you know, if it wasn't for her. So, uh, you know, she, you know, we agreed that it's time to jo you know jump back in. So we moved uh, back to Connecticut. I have family there um, and a ton of friends. And now uh, I, I sat in with uh, our first bassist, Dave Lavolsi. I went to my my buddies brought me to this small little like restaurant in Southport, Connecticut, and Dave Lavolsi was playing in a band um, there that night. And I met him that night. I was introduced and I sat in. Um, and the next day we, we, talk, we exchanged information and we talked and uh, one of our friends had opened a music venue in New Haven. Well, well no, a, a bar, excuse me. And they never had any plans to, you know, really turn it into a music venue. There was no PA, you know, there was, there was no equipment in there. And uh, he wanted to start dabbling in live music. So he was kind of looking around for a, a project to come in and do a Monday night gig, you know, every Monday night. So Dave and I talked about that, and we were talking about players, and immediately Tim and Adrian uh, came up, because I've known them for years and years uh, with The Breakfast Rack, and The Breakfast, had, back in the Psychedelic Breakfast days, would, would tour, um, just kind of old friends, and, you know, always hitting it. So uh, we kind of we kind of put the, you know, put it together like that. We had a couple of rehearsals, and then went and started doing this Monday night thing with another saxophone player, um, Chris Jensen. Are you Jensen. doing an interview right now? I'm you just want to yell at me for not doing interviews, this is a different and I'm interview. sitting right here. And I said I'll do live interviews, and now, like, and, and you're like, about oh, it's about rap. It's about rap. Oh, it's about rap. Oh, back to work. <laughs> Do you have something you want to say no, and get on the record? No. I just, it's funny because I saw everybody come in here and I can't hear anything. I'm, I'm like ensconced in this thing. And all of a sudden you're like, I just thought you're like, guys, can you get the fuck out of here? Because they all were like, and I walked out the door. I'm like, Tim's asleep. And... No. That's funny though. That's, uh, that's Sergeant Somerville. <laughs> this one's about Iraq. Okay. Yeah. No, how did, well, how'd you guys start playing together? Okay, so anyway, we were out, we're out, <laughs> it was in this story. We had a different sax player, Chris Jensen, and uh, we started playing this Monday Night Presidency, <laughs> and uh, it went really well. You know, we never we never started uh, we never started Kung Fu to be a touring band ever. You know, we we were just going getting together to have some fun, and uh, it got a great response. The shows were packed. We did it for fourteen weeks, and they were packed. You know, every night kind of put the bar that we started out on the map as well because since then they put in a PA and started having, you know, regional and, and some uh, some bigger, you know, touring talent come through. Um, Chris Jensen is a like professor of music, you know, he, he's he's really entrenched in the jazz scene in Connecticut and beyond. He plays with uh, with J-Mo from the Allman Brothers and some other acts. And the touring that we, we started touring with this band, you know, with Kung Fu and, you know, making baby steps and it wasn't something that was working out for him. So, um, Rob had uh, come and sat in with us a few times, and um, we've known him from Deep Banana Blackout, you know, and it was a natural fit, and it kind of just seamlessly, you know, seamlessly happened, you know, and then so the, you know, the, the band continued to tour um, after that, but yeah, he's, <sighs> Sergeant. You do the stories. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the next thing I was going to ask you about was um, kind of how your personal life fit in everything with getting married, having a kid. And and it seems that, you know, for a lot of the kids that I know that are trying to make their way as touring musicians, their bands and their music and their business are dictating a lot of what's going on in their lives. And it seems like you kind of got to a point where you wanted to make the decisions about what was going to go on in your life and that's kind of now played into a role in how you approached this new band and going out on the road and selling this product absolutely um we all have families uh, well actually no that's not true 
uh, my guitarist and uh, we, we all have significant others and three of us have children. Um, and it, I think it was a point in my life. Well, I, I don't know. You never plan to, you don't plan on getting, you know, you don't plan on, on falling in love or getting married or doing any of that stuff, you know. Um, it just kind of, it just happens, you know. I met my wife, Rack was playing the Big Goose Festival out in Vegas, you know, and my wife flew out and we met, and, you know, uh, that's all you have to say. It was Vegas. It was a crazy weekend, and, you know, we got married seven months later, you know, and it was just, you know, it was time. And, and you know, I was still on tour, you know, with the band uh, when she got pregnant, and we still, um, you know, we still did some touring up until she was eight months pregnant. And that's when I wanted to take the break. I wanted to be home for, you know, the last month and then, you know, there on. But, you know, it's it, – it, everything kind of worked out the way it should. I, I believe that things work out the way they should work out, you know, a certain level of serendipity to things. And, um, you know, everything leads back – if you're a musician and, and that's what you want to dedicate your life to, you're going to go back to it no matter how long of a break you have, you know, at some point. So – it was like I said. It was a kind of the, the natural order of, of things, if you will. Well, keeping that in mind, uh, if I told you five years ago that you'd be where you are today, doing what you're doing, what would you have told me? I would have said, "Wow, <laughs> who's going to win the Super Bowl in 2014? Because <laughs> we can make some money together, big guy." Um, you know, I would, I would, I would be, I would dig that. You know, um, five years ago, in 2008, you know. Um, I was happy to not be on the road playing music. We all were. Everybody in rap. Every it was just like a very nobody was like, you know, come on, let's, you know, let's do another tour, blah blah blah. It was just, you know, we were really burnt out. We were partying, you know. You know, I'm, I'll leave it at that. But everybody, you know, we were on tour and you know, it was definitely a party. So, you know, things calm down, people grow up and you know, it was just kind of the right time. That's why it's it's neat that the band, you know, it, it's a neat feeling that the band's getting back together in such a, it's just because we all want to play that music again, you know? It, it's not for anything else. You know, we have our other projects that are successful, they're going well, it's not, you know, we're not relying on Rack as a career vehicle anymore. So it's it's an interesting, you know, it's an interesting shift to that kind of energy, you know, the dynamic. You're not going after, you know, you're not riding that, band as a as a career it changes the way you approach it you know so you said you got a pretty heavy touring schedule for kung fu coming up this summer good amount of festivals and stuff what's uh what's the next step for you as you know a person and a musician um are you trying to make it happen out on the road do you do your studio stuff is it are you going to be settling down kind of at home and, and sticking around your local area eventually? Is there any way for you to know? Or are you just taking it one day at a time kind of thing? One day at a time. There's really no way to, to know. I love touring, personally. I really do. I love being on the road. I, I do love being home. But, you know, I think if you, you'll you speak to a, a wide variety of touring musicians, there is a certain there's – there's a magic to it. There's a magic to going from town to town every night and being out on the road and playing for new people and, and – you know, there's just so many times you can play in your hometown, you know, before you can't anymore. You know, you're not you're not breaking new ground. So it's 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 great to uh, do that. But, you know, I, I see myself probably as an older man in Florida somewhere, probably playing a lot of poker <laughs> and sitting on the beach. You know, <laughs> maybe I'll have to learn some some jobs, learn some job tunes and, you know, playing like a little piano bar or something. But no, for now, you know, while while we can, I would like to tour, you know, I, I while I'm, you know. Before, um, before it's too late. <laughs> before it's too late, you know. Right well, I, you know, really appreciate you taking some time with me and uh, opening up a little bit. And, uh, you know, wish you guys the best of luck with whatever project you're working on. And it's just about kind of keep on playing the notes. Keep on playing the notes, man. Thank you. Have a good one, man. You too, brother. All right. Thanks very much. That